I'm tired of your lies, popsicle stick and mixing cup. You never deliver crystal clear resin. And on the internet, they say I have to have a vacuum pump or a heat gun or something else stupid to get crystal clear resin casts like this. But I say no. There's a better way. I'm going to show you how to make small batches of bubble-free resin when making art pieces or special effects. On the upper right, you can see a cast resin eyeball. This eyeball is full of tiny little bubbles. It ruins the effect, makes it hard to see, and it's not really great for nice applications, especially in close-ups. But then next to it, I have a pool of resin I've just cast that has no bubbles in it. How did I go from full of bubbles to this? I've measured equal amounts of two parts of an epoxy craft resin. Now, I don't just put this in the mold and mix it. Oh, hell no, because what'll happen is you'll get layers of each type of resin on the outside and it'll stay sticky forever. So instead, we have to mix in a separate container. Now, usually you get little containers like this and they're cute and all, but when you stir them with the little popsicle stick, you make bubbles. Instead, I'm gonna use a plastic bag. With my bag propped up, I am going to pour the resin into the corner of the bag. Exciting. Um, this works best with slower set resins where you've got what's called a long pot time or work time. So if you're using a two minute or five minute set epoxy, you're going to be pushing this. Oh, by the way, I discovered fire ants in Texas this weekend. It was great. Um, Okay, so I'm going to let the thick resin pour all the way out so that I make sure I have the equal amounts in the bag. After pouring the resin in, I seal and mostly flatten the bag. There's a little bit of air in here as you can see, but you can also see the resin as a flat layer. Now I take a squeegee, like the ace of clubs, and I start mixing it. You could use your finger too, I just, you know, squeegees sound professional and stuff. So I take the time to really work it together and mix it very thoroughly. I pull in from the edges, press the air bubbles back out from the center, pull it back into the center, and I just get this very thoroughly mixed over the course of a minute or two. Eventually, you end up with a thick bubble-free layer here and a very thin layer that goes all the way to the edge of the bag. And so what you're gonna do is really mix up this bubble-free area where um, you can be thorough, but not introduce any more gas into the resin. Now that it's mixed, I set the bag on the edge of a table or block, and I cut the tiniest snip off the corner. And now I can gently squeeze out the resin into the mold. I'm not pressing really hard because I don't want to pull any unmixed layers off of the edge of the bag, just the bulk of the mixed resin. You can see there's some crap in the one on the right because I mixed it with one hand on camera, but on the one on the left that I did carefully without holding the camera, you can see is very, very clear. So um, how carefully you mix will definitely prevent gunk and bubbles from getting mixed into your resin. So here are our results. On the left side, you can see that when I carefully mixed resin with a stick, as best I could, I still got loads of bubbles in a small pot of resin. On the right hand side, you can see what happened when I mixed the resin on camera. Aside from gouging it out of the container, you can see the cracks there, it's really clear on the inside. And this is awesome because you don't need a vacuum pump, you don't need a heat gun, and you don't need to mix a whole lot of resin and waste some to get a layer of clear resin that you scoop the bubbles off of or something like that. Bianca, the stick has lied to us. We must punish it. Yes, destroy it. Send it straight to hell. Yes, straight to hell.